Hey guys, and welcome to another Emedio Compositions tutorial in the first Steps in Preparation series. Uh, I'm sorry about this one taking so long to appear, it's been nearly two weeks, I guess. Uh, but I was very busy creating a portfolio, and then I was very busy creating those other tutorials for the Appetizer series. Uh, but now, finally, I'm finished with all those things, and um, yeah, I'm coming at you today with a huge tutorial. At least I guess it's going to be huge, because we are going to cover render passes, and um, that is a chapter for itself. And it's great if you know how to use render pass, you can create stunning images quite easily. You can, uh, yeah, you can get so much more out of Blender. But it's a bit of a pain to explain. Um, so I tried to create a setup where you can actually see how all those things work um, right away. And what we're going to do, we're going to use all those render passes today. Okay. And as I said, it's going to be a huge tutorial. I don't think I can cover all of that in, in one tutorial because I was told that. Creating too long tutorials can be a bit, um, you know, annoying for, for uh, people to watch. So I'm trying to get it below half an hour per tutorial. But, you know, maybe I'm not going to make it today either. Um, we'll see. Anyway, um, about the final scene, it's going to look like this. Okay. Um, let me just... It's quite simple. We have like a plane and three monkeys and a light source. Now I'm going to upload this scene as it is to my... Um, website because creating that is very basic it's really very simple it would just be a waste of time to cover that right now so you can just download the finished scene with all the materials and stuff and then we're just going over the render passes okay so let me just give you a short overview if you render this you get the following result let me just pause the recording okay and this is our final image now you can see it looks quite weird and i'm going to explain to you why that is right now um as I said, for those who don't know anymore, a render, um, these are render layers, and you can assign different physical layers over here to each of those render layers. Then you can composite them together afterwards. And on each layer, you can activate or deactivate render passes that enable you to separate your scene into um, the different components. Okay, And um, as you can see over here, we only have one render layer, but we have a huge number of components that are then being added together. And this is the final result. And the first step we're going for is um, to create the original scene, okay? So this is our original scene, the combined scene that Blender gives us without doing any, any kind of compositing. And this is what we create, and this is what we create by um, combining all the separate render passes together. And you can see the difference is very small, or if we look at the difference node over here, you can see there is a difference. By the way, the difference node just um, compares to images, and wherever they wherever they are identical, it just gives you a black um, output, and if there's a difference, you can see something. Now, you can see we have some issues with the specularity over here, and a little bit, a little bit on the horizon, but that's really not something to worry about, and um, you can see it's not very well, very well noticeable in the final composite. Now, what I'm also going to show you, um, if you remember back to one of my previous tutorials, um, we talked about the mist, okay, how to create mist. And we saw that it works just fine, but as soon as you have a background texture, a textured sky or background, you can, uh, you notice that um, it's shining through wherever there is a uh, mist. And that is because mist in Blender, if you just enable it over here, it doesn't really create mist, but it just uh, makes your scene transparent wherever there is supposed to be mist, okay. And as I said, as long as you don't have a background texture, that works out just fine. But quite often you want to have a sky and then it doesn't work anymore. So what you do instead, you just enable mist over here. And then we use it in the compositor to create this. Okay, It has kind of a sandstorm feel to it. And we're also using a, using a noise texture to then manipulate the, the, um, the mist pass to then create this sandy looking thing. And then one other thing that I didn't enable just here, we're also going to take a look at vector blur. Because I showed you a motion blur before which can be enabled over here in the um, world panel. Uh, is that, that is not true, I'm sorry. In this scene, no. No, it's actually in the, um, in the render properties. Anyway, you can activate that, which actually takes quite a bit more time to render, or you can simply just use um, vector, then uh, a vector blur in a vector blur node in the compositor, and then you have much quicker results um, qualitatively they are not quite on the same level but they really aren't that much worse and very very much much faster okay so um 
Okay, so let's get into it. Um, let's just open up a new scene in Blender and let's get started. Okay, so once you open the scene I uploaded, you should see exactly this. Okay, and if you render that, you can see it takes 14 seconds. Not too much. And let me just um, go over the materials real quick. We've got one monkey. Um, in my final image that I showed you just a few seconds ago, this has subsurface gathering enabled. But for now, we did not enable subsurface gathering. Okay, I disabled it because um, it is a bit difficult to um, compose to composite subsurface gathering. And we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes after I'm taking a look at all the other things. Okay, then um, we have this. Oh, and by the way, the nose, you can see I have two materials over here. Um, and the nose is actually emitting light. It's got a yellow emitting material with an emit value of 10, which is quite high. So we can actually see this. Okay, then I've got a second monkey with a standard material. Um, everything left by default, except for mirror. I checked mirror with a reflectivity of 0.5. And everything else is okay as well. And then over here, we've got um, a transparent monkey with a alpha of 0. Everything else and the IOR of 1.5 and the depth of 3. Those are the things I changed, I think. Everything else is normal. Then we've got a, a ground plane, which just has a slight texture to give it some color and some bump mapping and slight different uh, specularity settings. And then we've got the lamp that actually generates the sky. So we have a slightly more interesting scene. And also sort of we have a slightly more interesting uh, refraction going on over here in the transparent monkey. We then have enabled um, ambient occlusion and environment lighting. Ambient occlusion at 1 with multiply, environment lighting at 0 0.3 with a white. Um, and then we've got indirect lighting enabled as well with factor 1 and 1 bounce, which then um, does two things. First of all, the indirect lighting allows us to um, get actually lighting from this nose. And it also um, allows the light rays to bounce and therefore it gives a more a cooler result. By the way, I did not enable soft shadows because they don't really make a point in this. They don't really help me to make a point in this scene. It's unnecessary. You can check it. It doesn't make that big of a difference. And um, then we have, under gather, we have uh, approximate, because with the ray traced, indirect lighting wouldn't work. And other than that, it's really quite simple. Now, um, this is our final scene, okay? And now we want to achieve the same result by taking it completely apart into all the separate channels, in the, into all the separate components, and then we want to re, um, recreate it, okay? So if you go to the node editor just now, you can see that doesn't really allow us too much. Um, you can see this is a render layer input, and we have exactly three passes. We have the image, the combined image. We have the, let's uh, use a backdrop. We've got the alpha, which is rather unspectacular as well. And we've got the C pass, the depth pass. And um, that's about it. Now, in order to recreate this thing, we need m much more passes. We need, over here in the render race, you can change that. We need, um, the color pass, okay, we need the diffuse pass, we need the specular, the shadow, the emit, the AO, the environment, indirect reflection, refraction, okay. You can see they automatically appear, but right now they're just black because we have to render it first. Um, and then we could also check the normal, so I can show you what that does. And let's also already check material and object index. We're not going to use them just now, but it doesn't matter if they're already already checked. And other than that, um, we're also going to talk about UV and mist, but actually let's check mist as well. And yeah, that's about it. So now let's just save the scene and let's hit F12 and I'm going to pause the recording again. Okay, now what we want to achieve is we want to use those and then with mixed nodes, you want to um, combine them to get the final image. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at all the passes. The normal pass is something we're not going to use for the for that uh, final combine, for that final combined pass. But um, it's just useful for something else. I'm going to show you uh, later on to get the Fresnel effect without actually enabling that in the mirror part in the mirror settings. Uh, yeah, more on that later. Then the color. It's basically a pass that just gives us the color that is actually selected. Um, for example, over here. Okay, it's white. It's white. For that one as well. We have a problem over here because this monkey appears black, okay, and that is because it's got refractions. Uh, it's got um, a transparent pass, okay, and we need to change that actually because this way it doesn't work, but we'll see why in a second.
Then we've got the fuse, which is really just the diffuse color with uh, basic shading. No shadows though, and just the colors as well. Then we've got the specular pass, which is just, you know, it just shows us the specular highlights. We've got a shadow pass, which just shows us those, shows us those very harsh, ugly shadows. Then ambient occlusion, which is kind of like self-shadowing, um, you know, where not so many light rays can actually reach. Then the reflection pass, you can see that's how it looks, it looks quite cool. A bit oversaturated, but uh, anyway. Then the refraction pass, same problem with this one, also quite oversaturated. Then the indirect lighting pass, which now you can see, it just shows us um, not the actual light from the lamps, but just um, the rays that then bounce around, okay? And here, of course, the color of the nose, and, or the emitting light of the nose. Then we have index object and index, um, index um, material index. And actually, I set them up already. Let's just change that, actually. Um, let me just show you how you do that. If you want to set up an index or a material object, um, actually, let's just disable those for now. We have to do that afterwards again. Um, under, if you select the, uh, the transparent monkey, then under material, or actually, let me just see. Yeah, under material, uh, under the object um in the object tab just set pass index to zero actually and same for that monkey over there let's go to material and in the gray material just set that back to zero as well we're going to take a look at that later on let's just re-render this again and let me just pause the recording okay and now if we take a look at that again you can see they are now just black and black as well that's okay then we've got the mist pass and then um, you can see a slight edge over here, so you can see there is actually some data on it that is then useful to create the mist. Then we also have the emit pass, which just shows us the bright um, yellow nose of our monkey. And then the environment lighting pass, which, if you compare that to the I mean, occlusion pass, is quite similar. It's quite similar. Okay, I need to learn how to pronounce those words. It's quite similar. Now, um, we could use the AO pass instead of the environment pass for the environment lighting, but uh, it's a bit easier to um, arrange or organize your scene this way, so we're just going to leave that as it is. Okay, so now about how to combine them. What you're going to do first is you're going to use add nodes, uh, to, you're going to use multiply nodes to um, create um, the shadowing passes, okay? So. So we're going to use the diffuse pass, um, add, a, add a mix node. We're going to use the diffuse pass that looks like this. We're going to set that to black and that to add, okay? Because if that is add, then it actually adds this value. If this is black, this is zero. Therefore, it doesn't do anything as long as there's no input. You can see this is our diffuse pass. And now we're going to add, uh, to multiply, I'm sorry, multiply and that set, let's set that to white because now it actually multiplies this, this input with one and therefore it stays the same and now we can we can just add the shadows and you can see that's what it looks like okay and then the next thing we're going to do we're going to duplicate this multiply node and we're going to add the ambient occlusion pass same thing we have an ambient occlusion pass which is which is black and white and with multiply we're just going to multiply the black values onto this image and therefore creating a darker image okay and then the next thing would be to start adding things, okay? So let's once again duplicate that. Let's set that to black. Now you can see um, it turns black and we're just going to change that to add. Therefore, it doesn't affect it anymore. And now we're going to add in our first, um, our first color pass, so to say. And we're going to start with the specular pass, okay? Take that, let's just add that in. Now you can see we have those specular highlights going on. Um, next thing we're going to add are actually the reflections. Okay. Now you can see we have reflections. You can see up to now it's really quite simple. Um, you just need to know that all the uh, the shading passes need to be multiplied and all the coloring passes need to be um, added. Next thing we're going to add are the refractions like this. Now you can see our monkey is refracting the environment, or it's just transparent and yeah. Now the next thing is 
of the emit pass. So let's just duplicate that again. Now let's just add the emit pass and you can see the node starts glowing. And then um, it starts to become a bit more difficult, okay? Because now what's left is the environment pass, the environment lighting pass and the indirect lighting pass. And they can unfortunately not just be added, okay? Let's just try that. If we just add them in the indirect lighting, that's what happens. And um, although this doesn't even look too bad, um, you can see that that's not really how it's supposed to look, okay? And the same thing with the environment, of course, since that looks the same as ambient occlusion, if we just add that, you can see that's what we get. It just, bec everything becomes everything becomes white because we're adding quite bright white values onto everything and therefore it doesn't work out as well. So we need to prepare those passes first. So what we need to do, we need to pre-multiply or, well, we need to multiply them with the color pass, okay? So let's just add in, or let's just copy this multiply node twice. In the upper one, let's just add in the indirect lighting pass, like this actually. In the lower one, let's add in the environment lighting pass. And then let's take that color pass and let's just add that into over here and to over here. Okay, and now we get this and this. And this is our indirect lighting pass and this is our new environment lighting pass. Now we can actually uh, use them and we can add in the ind indirect lighting pass and shift D, let's add in the environment lighting pass like this. Uh, is that correct? Let me just see. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. But as you can see, this is not really um, similar to what we have over here. Okay. And the first reason for that is that um, over here you can see we've got an environment lighting, an energy of 0.3. Okay. And if you have 0.3 over here, then you actually need to set that to 2.3 three as well okay and now you can see that actually helps it quite a bit already and you can see we're already quite close actually um, the main difference being that this um, refraction pass or just um, the, uh, um, the transparent um, refractions from this monkey are not very sim similar to what we have over there okay and that is because of this you can see the color pass over here has just a black monkey and i'm not quite sure why blender does that i think it's rather annoying um if you have um the transparent under transparency settings the alpha to s if you turn it down to zero you get a blackout but if you have it at one you get a white and then everything in between is interpolated and that's really not what we want so we need to change that manually unfortunately okay and the way we do that um is that we just use um, a material, in this case a material, um, or actually an object index in this case, okay? So we're going to, back to the 3D viewport, we select this monkey, we go to over here, um, to the object tab, and then under relations we, we type in 5. It doesn't, really, it doesn't really matter what number you type in, you can also go with 1 or with 50 or whatever, in my case I take 5. Then we just go back to the node editor, Save it, and we have to re-render this, okay? Okay, so that finished. And now we need to make it so that we can use this um, object index as a factor to mix in some some white into here. Or actually not into here, but into um, the input that goes in here, okay, from the color. So we need to modify our color pass, and we do that by adding a mix node, okay? We're going to put that just over here, we connect the color to over here, we connect this to over here and here. So now this is actually our new color pass. And you can see that doesn't really work, so we need to um, connect the object index to over here. And now, um, that was wrong, we need to connect the object index to over here, I'm sorry. Okay, now you can see this works out. But there is one thing that doesn't work out, because right now, um, if we just have index object, object index like this, it just um, displays all the um, materials, materials that actually use an object index. So we need to go to Converter under, with Shift-A you can, uh, by the way, go to the Add menu. Under Converter you can go to ID Mask. And now we can put that in there. 
like this. And then we can actually select our index number, okay? On zero, we have everything. On one, there's nothing, I thought. Let me see, yeah. Two, nothing, three, four, five. And then on five, you can see our monkey appears again. And now if you use that, we have this. And you can see this is a bit too bright, okay? And we actually needed to make it so that this actually matches those monkeys, because as you might remember, um, we have the same diffuse color and the same intensity, okay? And in our case, I just happen to know that the intensity of this monkey is 0.8, because it's always 0.8 if you don't change it. So we're just going to, to HSV, 0.8. And that should actually match this up quite nicely. You can see now it's perfect. And now you can see, we, we suddenly have, um, if we mute that, you can see it's black, and now it's suddenly, there's a monkey there, as there is supposed to be. Because now um, it multiplies this environment lighting pass over this image, and since this image now actually has some color, it can actually create this monkey. Same for over here, you can see there's a difference. Without that, it's just black, and now it's no longer black. And if we add that all together, you can see this is our final output, and this is, if we now compare that to over here, surprisingly similar. And that's actually what, what we try to achieve. Now, there are some issues, though. Um, Brightness-wise, I think ours is a bit brighter than the original. Um, and here you can actually see how it actually starts to build itself. And that's pretty cool. And you can also see how essential the environment lighting pass is in some scenes. Okay, so now let's just compare this to the final output that the Blender gives us with a mix node. And let's just change that to difference. And let's put that in there. And now let me just try to figure out why there is still such a big difference. And let me get back at you as soon as I figured it out. Okay, figured it out. Um, it's something I forgot, which is quite important. Um, you need to multiply those, um, the indirect lighting and the environment lighting pass with the color pass. However, you also have to um, multiply the color pass with the um, intensity of the object, okay? So in our scene, you can see, if you select plane, for example, you can see intensity 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, okay? So if you work with the compositor, it's a good idea to just leave all the intensity values at 0 0.8. You can always just influence them in the compositor afterwards, okay? So in this case, because it's it's there is no intensity pass over here, okay? You ha you'd have to create the intensity pass separately with a new layer, okay, you could do that, um, but and then on that new layer you would make everything shadeless and just use the intensity, but that's really a lot of a lot of things you'd have to do and it's a big pain, so let's just keep it at point 0.8, let's duplicate that, like this, and then let's just multiply, to multiply, and let's set that to 0.8 as it is because it's the same 0.8 as over here okay and now you can see we get a much better result i guess you can see it's almost identical wherever as i said before wherever there it's black there's no difference at all and you can see we have some issues with issues with the specularity over here okay i'm not quite sure why that is if we compare it to images um by eye you can see they are fairly si similar we, you, we can see a difference over here where the specularity is, but I mean, seriously, that's not really something worth um, uh, being annoyed about. So we basically created this pass and that actually worked out just fine. Now, if you really want to correct that mistake over here, we can just do that. We could go to 3D view, select the monkey, go to over here, um, create a pass index with number, let's say six, the other one's five, this one's six, node editor, duplicate the ID mask, let's put that over here, or over here, it's a bit easier, let's select the index, object index to over, let's uh, put it in there, let's set that to six, and you can see now we cannot see anything, so we have to re-render this, let me just pause it, um, okay, now let's get back into over here, and now let's just, um, create a new, um, let's add a new mix node, and let's actually add this, and let's just set that to something darker, and let me just see something, okay, okay, why does that not work, let me see, oh, we actually need, 
arm it like this. Okay. And now we should actually be able to, let me see. Now we can create this mask like this. Okay. Let's just one other thing. Let's just invert this node. Get the opposite like this. Now we have basically a completely white image, except for where the monkey is. We can here adjust um, the brightness of the monkey. Okay. And now let's just use that as a factor amount to add in the specularity. I think that's our specular um, adding node. And you can see now, now we have control over that. Okay. Now if I um, lower that to something darker, you can see it doesn't really work. We need to go a bit up, a bit more, a bit more, and then it starts to change. So... I think it's a different issue than just the specularity. Um, but now you can see those images are even... Now they really look identical to the eye, okay. Um, I will try to figure out why that is, this problem over here. I'm quite sure it's got a, a something to do with the, um, with the mirror, okay, because there's a mirror, we have some issues with the uh, transparency, and not transparency, with the specularity, and yeah, as soon as I figure it out, I will um, get back at you guys, but it's probably in a later tutorial. Okay, so we created our um, nearly identical um, pass, but there's one last thing missing, and that is the sky, okay? You can see here we have the sky, here we don't have the sky. What are you going to do? We're going to use a mix node. We're going to mix that in with that over there, with the um, combined actually. And we use the alpha as a factor amount. Yeah, I didn't really aim that well, like this. Okay, now we have our we have our sky. However, now if we once again add in a um, difference node, too bad I deleted the last one, and <coughs> set that to difference um, over here, then you can see if we now insert this, we have an additional issue over here, okay? And that's because we actually, um, using a anti-aliased image and when we um, multiply it according to the alpha or, yeah, over, or we mix it according to the alpha onto that other image and therefore we get this um, zone here where it's not really clear um, what is supposed to be used and it gets this weird um, this weird line. Now we can change that by unpre-multiplying this image here with the alpha, okay? or to be more accurate, to, to divide it by the alpha. So we're going to duplicate this node. We're going to set that to divide. We're going to use the alpha over here as the second input. And we're using that over here. Now you can see that's what happens. But then if that's on the wrong place, I just noticed. Um, we need to put that in there, of course, and connect that there. And we need to use this over here actually, let's once again use the alpha over here. Okay. Now you can see we have this line, and if we increase that, you can see the line becomes thinner until it's suddenly gone. Okay. Now five is probably a bit much, but if we now look at this, you can see this is the line. And now if we decrease that, let's say four, you can see the line changes. Three, two, okay, that's too much. Three, three point five. And that's probably as close as we get to the final result. And now you can see we don't no longer have this gray line and it looks just fantastically similar to our original render, okay? So this was much quicker than I thought. Uh, we already covered all the passes, all the standard passes at least, except for one. Um, and that is the material index, okay? And the reason we did not cover that is because we didn't use it yet. But let's say we want to use subsurface gathering and that's kind of an annoying thing to deal with in the compositor. Let's just select our monkey with its glowing nose and let's select the first material and let's change one thing, let's just enable subsurface gathering. Let's not change anything else because it really doesn't matter for this tutorial and let's just hit F12 and I'm going to pause the recording again. Okay now the subsurface gathering increased our render time by only two seconds so that's acceptable and now you can see um, suddenly there's a huge difference over here, okay? And that is, because it took me a while to figure that one out, it's because when you use subsurface gathering, um, 
ambient occlusion and some other things are no longer um, rendered or no longer added on top of the subsurface gathering. Okay, so we need to create a mask to mask that out. And this is actually not even that difficult. We just um, need to create a mask that only has this material on it. Okay, so in this case, we're not going to use an object mask over here, so, but we're going to use a material index mask. And we're going to do that by clicking on, on the material. We want a mask. We're then going down to options, pass index, and let's put that to number seven. We could, I think we could also put it to number five because it's not an object, but you just, it's just easier to increase it by one step every time you use a new uh, index. Now we need this, of course, um, but over here, let's put that to seven. And then let's just put that over here. Let's input the material and let's use this as a factor to, first of all, um, mask out the ambient occlusion, which is... Let me see this one over here. But you can see this kind of didn't work. Um, because if now if I... Um, oh, and one other thing, we have to render it first, of course. Because we changed the... Um, because we actually uh, applied the material index to the material. But now you can see at some point... This is what we get for the mask, and you can see this looks identical to this one. Except that we have ambient occlusion on the monkey, where we do not want ambient occlusion, okay? So we have to invert this image with a color invert node. Let's put that over here, and that to in there. And now you can see we have ambient occlusion everywhere except on this monkey. And that solved our ambient occlusion problem. And now if we look at the combined, you can see that that looks like, looks like this. and Hmm, this is still not the same. Now, um, the next problem we have is that you can see over here, we do not have this indirect lighting, and over here, we do have this indirect lighting. But it's also a brightness difference, okay? And that is, uh, once again, because we also don't want to use um, the environment lighting pass on our subsurface gathering material. So let's just use that as well as a factor for... Um, let me see where our environment lighting pass is for over here. And you can see it doesn't really work. Now the reason is that um, previously we used the environment lighting pass with a factor of 0.3 to light our scene. Now if we use this as a factor, you can see this is all white, this is all one, and then this value is ignored. So we need to create one, uh, we, we, cre we need to create a value um, that actually still includes those point three, So we're going to do that with a multiply node, um, color mix. Put that in there, other over here. Use that as an input. Then we're going to use this one to over here. And you can see that's what we get. And now we're just going to, oh, uh, of course we need to set this to multiply. And now if I turn that down, you can see it starts to do what you want. So we're just going to HSV, hit at the point 3, point 3. So now we have, once again, a grayish value. And if now we use that in order to combine everything with the environment lighting pass, you can see this starts to look fairly sim similar to this one over here. There's one issue, though, and that is this um, jagged egg. And that's because our mask is actually jacked. Now we can set that to smooth, which unchecks it a little bit but then it's still not perfect okay now if we zoom out a little bit to 100% we can say that let me see where is 100% um, somewhere around here here we got it you can see it's not that well visible but it's still it's still a problem it can cause you problems now if you want to have a perfectly smooth and perfect mask you need to put this monkey head on a separate render layer, additionally to the first render layer, of course, and use the second render layer just to give you the alpha of this monkey, okay? And then you can actually get a clean mask. But we are not going to do that now because it doesn't isn't really necessary. And now you can see over here in the difference node, there's not much difference going on over here. The one thing that we have, though, is this um, indirect lighting. And believe it or not, but the indirect lighting 
will also be subtracted from the subsurface gathering material. So once again, we're going to use this mask, not the one we modified just now, just the normal one, and use that to over here, and you can see it turns black as well. Now we always have those lines, and we can't really do much about them, but you, as you can see over here, you don't really see the problem there. Okay, it looks pretty much perfect now. I think if you don't want, if you don't know what to look for, you cannot really tell the difference. Okay, so now we um, achieved that. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to use um, the mist feature and how to use the vector blur. But as promised, I try not to create too long tutorials. Uh, which kind of already happened, but it's still only about 35 minutes or something. And I think we call it a an episode here, and we're going to continue in the next tutorial, which would be part 24. So, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped. If you have any kind of questions or comments or ideas or whatever, suggestions, please post them in the comments. I'm always uh, glad to get some feedback. And yeah, by all means... Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.